Hey guys, welcome back to a new video and today I'm going to show you how to downgrade the operating system of almost any Sony Xperia smartphone. Now today's candidate will be Sony Xperia XZ. So this is my Xperia XZ and this phone is running Android Oreo. So we will be downgrading this phone back to Android 6 which is Android Marshmallow, the operating system this phone shipped with. So if we go to system and we go to about phone, you will see that this phone is running Android 8 which is Android Oreo. Now you may ask what's wrong with Android Oreo? Now the problem is that this phone kind of performs like crap on Android Oreo because Android Oreo is way too heavy for this phone to handle. So if we downgrade this phone back to Android Marshmallow, the operating system this phone shipped with, it should perform like new. And yeah, I've seen a lot of comments on my videos that after the upgrade, the phone has become sluggish, it has become slow, the battery backup is not good. So once you downgrade your phone back to its original operating system without any updates, everything should be good. Now the downgrade process is itself very simple and easy. We'll be using Flash tool and this program works on almost any Sony Xperia smartphones. So you can downgrade or upgrade any Sony Xperia smartphone with this little software. And I think the method is almost the same. Now the method I'm going to show you, the exact same method I was able to downgrade the Sony Xperia XZ Premium. We'll be able to downgrade the XZ. And also I was able to downgrade this phone which is uh, Xperia XA ultra so if you guys remember i did upgrade this phone to android 7 so if you go to about you can see now we are running android 6 which is again the original operating system of this phone and it performs great oh and by the way guys i think i should make myself clear right away in case you end up breaking your phone or in case your phone ends up in a boot loop I will not be held responsible and you're doing this at your own risk because there are many factors involved in case your computer is infected with a virus you might end up with a broken phone if your usb cable is damaged or if your usb port is loose then again you're gonna end up in a boot loop because the computer will lose connection to the phone while it's being flashed so once again do this on your own risk make sure that your computer is free from viruses and that you're using a usb cable that is not broken or anything and also make sure that your phone is at least 90% charged because you don't want the phone to switch off in the middle of the flashing process. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a soft brick. All right, so let's begin. All right, guys. So the first thing we need to do is download and install Sony Mobile Flasher. Now, this software is capable of upgrading as well as downgrading the firmware on your Sony Xperia smartphone. And it works on almost all Sony Xperia devices. Alright, so to download this software, you'll need to go to this website called flashtool.net and downloads. I'll put this link in the video description so you can just click it and go to this website from over there. And then select Windows if you're running Windows operating system. I'm doing this tutorial on Windows, so Windows it is. Oh, and by the way, if you have the Xperia C4 or the C5, please don't use Flash Tool, it will break your device. And then once you download and install this, then we need to install the drivers. Now to install the drivers of Flash Tool, you need to go to your directory wherever you've installed Flash Tool. But by default, Flash Tool installs in your C drive and here it is. Open the Flash Tool folder and go to drivers and install this driver package. Now you don't need to install drivers in case you have Xperia Companion already installed on your computer. And I'll also put this link in the video description in case you want to install Xperia Companion. So once again, if you have Xperia Companion, no need to install this. But if you don't have Xperia Companion, go ahead and install this little driver package. I already have Xperia Companion, so I will not be installing this. Now let's move on to the next step, which is downloading the phone's firmware. Now I usually like to use XperiaBlog.net to download all the different firmwares for my Xperia devices. Can see they have xperia xz dual so we are flashing xz dual i'm gonna open this up but by the way you can see all the different categories here you can find a whole range of uh, firmwares over here they even have the firmware for the x xperia x dual so you'll need to find out which model xperia you are using for that you just go to settings scroll all the way down and tap on system and scroll down here you'll see the model number of your phone f8332 which is the Xperia XZ Dual. So you select here XZ Dual and here you can see we have all the relevant firmwares F8332 and this is for the Indian version which is the one that I have and this is the version of Android listed here. So we'll need to download an older version of Android so let's go to the second page. So I'll be downloading this one 
which is Android 6, Marshmallow, the very first operating system this phone came out with. And yes, you can flash different region firmware. You guys know I already flashed the Taiwan version on my Xperia XZ Premium. It worked, but don't flash a different model number. So make sure that you match the model number. So I cannot flash F8331 firmware on my F8332, which is the Xperia XZ and XZ Dual. So don't get messed up. Just match the model number to the firmware that you're downloading. Anywho, we are downloading for XZ Dual and by the way, you'll need to register on this website in order to access the download link. So click on this button to get your decryption key and then just copy it, press this button. It'll take you to mega.nz, paste the decryption key, click on decrypt and then download the FTF firmware. And then just wait for it to download. And it usually goes into the download folder, that's where the Chrome web browser usually downloads. Alright, so you can see the firmware is here in the downloads folder. Just copy it, then go to your C drive once again, go to users and click on the user that you're logged in. I'm logged in into administrator and then look at this folder called dot flash tool. Double click and then double click on firmwares and this is where you paste it. And just wait for the pasting process to get over and that's really all you need to do. Now we're going to launch flash tool. So let's just close all this up so that it becomes easier for me to make this video. Just wait for it to finish syncing then press on this lightning button. Make sure you've selected flash mode, click on OK. Then select your phone. We are going to flash Xperia XZ. And then over here, we are going to clear the apps log. We're going to clear the user data. Now, once you select user data, all your personal files, all your folders inside the internal memory will be lost, including all your apps and your contacts. And please, please, please make sure that you know your Google account details before you do this, because once you flash your phone, it will be back to its factory original settings and as a security measure android always asks for your google account details after a factory reset so consider this like a factory reset but we are going back to the original version of android and i think i'll also flash this qnovo thing a lot of people don't flash these and some pe um, on some videos i've seen people flashing all of this but yeah i'm kind of comfortable with only these because this is just my tried and tested method. So here we are going to check apps log, Qnovo and user data and then click on flash and then just wait. It takes around five to 10 minutes on slower PCs, but if you have a much faster computer, it will be a little bit more quick. So now we just wait until we get a dialogue asking us to plug in the phone. Alright guys, so the flash tool is asking us to power the phone off. Press and hold the volume down button while you connect the phone to your computer through the USB cable. So let's zoom out here. And once again, let me show you, if you go to settings, scroll all the way down to system, this phone is running Android 8 Oreo. So let's switch the phone off. And once you turn the power off, just wait for about 5-6 seconds so that the phone completely powers down. Alright, so now I'm going to plug in the phone. I'll press and hold the volume down button and plug in the phone. Flash tool search should detect. I still have the volume down button pressed. Alright, so now we can go ahead and release the volume down button. Keep the phone aside. And it is giving us a little prompt. It tells me that FSC script is found. Do you want to use it? Yes. And now the flashing process will begin. And now you just wait. I put the camera here. And don't worry guys, if the flash tool gets stuck somewhere, it is still processing the job. So you guys just saw that it got stuck for about half a minute. And don't worry, just let it do its thing. The phone is still connected to the PC. No need to panic, just give it some time. Alright guys, that's it. Flashing has been completed successfully. 
So once the flash tool does its, uh, finishes its job, you'll see this message. Please unplug and start your phone. So now all you have to do is unplug the phone and turn the power on. Now do keep in mind that first boot after a complete system flash will take around 5 to 10 minutes. So don't worry if the Xperia logo is just animating. Just wait. The phone will start up. So I'm just going to keep it here because it will take some time for the phone to start up after a system flash. Okay, so that actually took around 5 to 6 minutes. But yeah, here we are. So what I'm gonna do now is insert my SIM card and the SD card and then we'll take it from there. Although you don't have to remove the SD card and SIM card when you're flashing your phone. For example, when I flashed my Xperia XZ Premium, I left the SD card and the SIM card in the phone. The SD card won't be erased and nothing will happen to your SIM card. So don't worry about that. And I have it removed because I wasn't using this phone. So I'll insert the SIM and I'll be right back. Alright guys, so here we are back to Android Marshmallow on our Sony Xperia XZ. Now it looks exactly the same as Android Oreo, but if you go to the settings, scroll all the way down, tap on about phone, you'll see the Android version is Android 6, which is Android Marshmallow. Look at how much bloatware there is on the Indian ROM. So we have Midnight Pool, Modern Combat 5, Asphalt Nitro, Sony, LIV. I mean, what the heck, Sony? Why do you have to include all of this nonsense? I mean, we buy Sony phones because they are, uh, but they don't have any bloatware. But anywho, I'm just going to uninstall all of these or disable them. They can't be uninstalled. Damn it. Maybe I should have flashed a different region ROM. So guys, it has been about 24 hours since I've been using this phone on Android 6 Marshmallow and I must say I'm quite impressed by the gain in performance and especially the battery life. So first off, let me show you the battery life. So let's go to settings, uh, battery and no, I have not been using stamina mode and check out this screen on time. 4 hour 24 minutes and we are still at 36%. So maybe I can easily touch 5 hours of screen on time, maybe more than that on a single charge. And do keep in mind this phone is 2 years old at this point of time. The battery has seen considerable degradation and this phone does not really have a big battery. You can see I unplugged my phone around 12 pm and since then I have been using the phone like I usually do. Let's scroll down here so you guys can see the different apps that have, that have been using the battery. So yeah, I'm quite happy with the battery life and the best part is the phone does not lag. The performance is good. I mean, this phone is now comparable to the Xperia XZ Premium. I mean, there are absolutely no lags at all on this phone right now. And check this out, stamina mode actually works. So once you turn this on, the phone will actually slow down the processor to save battery power. So let's turn stamina mode off. I think you can also turn it off from over here. So there we go. And one thing that has been bugging me is this Xperia system update from I'm not sure how to disable this every time I just go to settings. Just force stop this and it goes away. And that's all you need to do and it will kind of come back if you restart the phone. I think it comes back after some time. Oh and this is important. After you downgrade your Xperia back to its original operating system you must disable the automatic update setting. So to do that, go to setting, scroll down here, tap on about phone, tap on software update, and then tap these three dots, settings, and turn this setting off. Auto download system update, turn this off. And I've also turned off this auto update apps. You can see there the system update is available. I think this is the Android NuGet upgrade. So Sony does want you to download and install this update. I think you can manage this phone with Android 7, but since I want maximum performance, I have downgraded this phone back to Android 6 Marshmallow. And yeah, it does not lag, does not get hot, kind of like it. And uh, you can see I have all these different apps open and I have absolutely no issues uh, with this phone at all on Android 6. Now, if it was running Android 8 Oreo, this phone would lag and it would get hot. Especially you'll get bad battery backup on Android 8. But that's not the case on Android 6. Because this phone is designed to run Android 6. I mean this phone shipped with Android 6 pre-installed. So you can see, camera works without any issues. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know, some people commented that once you upgrade to Android Oreo, the bottom speaker stops working. I never had that issue and I have never had any issues with this phone apart from this phone lagging and poor battery life on Android 8. I mean that that has gone away since I've up, since I've downgraded this phone on Android 6. So about phone, you can see we are running Android 6 Marshmallow. This is brilliant guys. I I'm enjoying this phone more than I enjoy my Xperia XZ Premium. Why? Because double tap to sleep and double tap to wake. You don't have to press any buttons and check this widget out. I'm not sure why Sony removed this widget but I kind of dig this widget a lot. And once you like a photo, you just tap on it and it will take you to the gallery. I think this widget is not there on the Xperia XZ Premium. I might be wrong. But yeah, anyway. And one question you guys might have is, have I lost any features that are noticeable? Not really because I have downgraded this phone from Android 8 back to Android 6. That's a pretty big jump. And I haven't noticed any loss of features or functionality. I mean, forget about losing features. This phone is actually performing better on the older version of Android. And all the apps are compatible. All the apps run exactly the same like, it, like they do on Android 8 and Android 9. I did get a taste of Android 9 on my XZ Premium. Now I had a similar experience with my Xperia XA Ultra. After I upgraded this phone to Android 7 Nougat, this phone became slow, sluggish and the battery wouldn't last that long. Now after I downgraded this phone back to Android uh, 6 which is Android Marshmallow, the operating system this phone shipped with, this phone is back to its original performance and the battery backup is also much better. So if you go to about phone, this one is also running Android 6. So guys, I think if you have an older Xperia which is running a more recent version of Android and if you don't get good performance out of it, I think it's not worth upgrading the uh, Android operating system of your phone. And once again, if you want good performance out of your Xperia, downgrade it to its original operating system, the Android version the phone shipped with and you'll have a much better experience than the upgraded versions of Android. Alright, so thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos like these, and I'll see you guys next time.